The United Nations Children Fund says gender-based violence is an emergency in South Africa. While young boys are victims of all forms of violence, there are shocking levels of violence, especially sexual violence against girls and young women. This week, South Africa launched its annual 16 Days of Activism for No Violence Against Women and Children campaign. Activists dedicated to the cause of children fear the crisis is worse than it is being reported. We're now joined by Dr. Shahida Omar, who's a clinical director of the Teddy Bay Foundation for her assessment of the crisis. Dr. Omar, good evening and thank you so much for your time tonight. Certainly, as we're marking yet another 16 days of activism campaign, we do have cases that are in fact emerging that are really uh, just painting a picture of just how dire the situation is. When you look at a campaign like this one, because we have it every year, does it really bear fruit? So certainly the campaign, we're not proponents of 16 days of activism. We are proponents of 365 days campaign. However, we cannot exclude the fact that the 16 days gives the platform, it highlights, it creates opportunities and referral pathways for people to come forward and access support or make disclosures or become aware of their rights and responsibilities and how to uh, access that kind of information, but also to pursue uh, proper channels of justice. So looking at the 16 days, I think... Just the announcement by the president of the five days of mourning and, you know, no violence against women and children brings back a very sad case that we saw day before yesterday. We actually saw the child two weeks ago, a five-year-old that had witnessed her biological father shooting the mother in front of her. Two of her younger siblings under the age of three and one year old were present. Of course, they were not, not able to disclose, but this four-year-old was actually able to disclose and came into the session using a red crayon saying that this is the color that she saw on her mother. She took a stick and she, she actually drew the stick and pointed the stick and she said, good, 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 good. That's what actually my father did to the mother. But the sad part is that the father, despite all of this, uh, the children were entrusted in the care of the maternal grandmother. And the father was released on bail day before yesterday on the very eve when our president announced the 16 days of activism. So the shame that, you know, we are still failing our children, we are still failing our families. The maternal grandmother was not even aware that the bail was actually awarded to the biological father. She contacted us immediately yesterday, fearing for her life and fearing for her grandchildren because she had already received indirect threats from other people in the community. And, and she fears for the children. She fears for her safety. She's got the alarm system. She actually brought in an alarm system. She had to uh, spend money. So I just want to say that we are finding that even with that MEP, the, who was on the, you know, reinstated in the position of his uh, employment, where he raped, allegedly raped two eight-year-olds, we find that this is an emerging threat, a pattern where we are protecting the rights of the accused or the suspect more than the victim. This alleged perpetrator who uh, murdered his wife uh, had somebody accompanying him to the courtroom, whereas the maternal grandmother was fearing for the life of the children and herself and had no kind of support. So I think this is a harsh reality and brutality that GB victims, uh, GBB victims are suffering from and that we need to be aware and alerted to this kind of response that is being handed out to GBB victims. And Dr. Omar, when you look at a case like this, certainly a child describing such harrowing details, should a, 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 a person accused of such a crime, especially given what the child had said, should they be given bail? Definitely not. That's why I say that systems are failing the child, systems are failing families, that we are failing our victims and we are ensuring that they are being subjected to further trauma and secondary victimization. This four-year-old will have lifelong uh, images, flashbacks, because at, at, at the tender age of four, nothing seems to make sense to her, but as she grows older, she was able to identify graphic details and illustrate what has happened. So what are we saying that, uh, you know, the rights of a perpetrator where he's awarded bail on such serious crimes, nature of a heinous crime of this nature, 
where the perpet alleged perpetrator is granted bail, we just submitted or made submissions on the GBB victim support uh, bill in, in Parliament. And, of course, the uh, process is that serious crimes of this nature, people should not be granted any bail. Uh, I mean, I think we just, just lost the plot because we are supporting and we are perpetrating the cycle of violence. People are getting a very different message out there, and victims and their families are not being heard. They are falling to death years and continue to suffer at the hands of the very system that are supposed to protect them. And, Dr. Omar, when you look at this child, only four years old, as you say that, uh, you know, this child will be, will be getting flashbacks about what uh, she saw um, her father allegedly do to her mother. What will it take for her to even reach a point where she's able to overcome such trauma? So, I mean, I think just looking at the dynamics here, the betrayal, the deceit, um, you know, the issue of trust, by a loved one, where both parents oh. were loved people. And for the child to actually process that, internalize that, make sense of that, the long-term implications are actually so destroying. One cannot even begin to think how she will cope with it as she grows, because you've identified the flashbacks, the post-traumatic stress oh. disorder, because as she grows older, the complexity are going to become more significant to her. It's going to make, you know, it's not going to make sense to her. It's going to make sense, but it's not going to make sense. So the avoidance, the hypervigilance, the startle responses, the, the, you know, issue around forming close relationships with a male figure, the barriers to intimacy, the self-destructive, self-defeating behaviors, where we actually have seen children have resorted to substance abuse have resorted to all sorts of other self-destructive behaviors of self-mutilation, other disorders. I mean, it could result in depression, suicide. So, you know, the outcome and the implications, one cannot even begin to think of the outcome or the impact or the negative consequences it could leave on this young child. The imprint of this image and of this haunting image that she was privy to and that she witnessed as a tender four-year-old, when life should be all about playing, love, care and protection. Certainly a sad story there. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. That's Dr. Shahida Omar, who is with the Teddy Bear uh, Foundation, certainly describing a very disturbing story of a four-year-old uh, who had to give a graphic description of you know what she says transpired when her father allegedly shot her mother and certainly uh, disturbing further is the fact that uh, the the father is now on 10,000 rand bail and that the grand the grandmother is now fearing for her life